we're, we're not confident with any precision at all um, because for two reasons. No, we don't, we don't think that. We think that uh, in terms of nationals, uh, we're into the hundreds, uh, possibly the, the mid to low hundreds. But again, it depends on eligibility, which of course is one of the things that has been a challenge. But, but I am confident that the Prime Minister is right that we've got the overwhelming number out. Okay, I'm joined now by James McLaren in London. He's defence and security journalist and a former British army officer. James, thanks uh, so much for joining us uh, on the programme. As someone who uh, has served in Afghanistan, um, you must have lost friends and colleagues. What do you tell their loved ones now? What was it all for? Well, that's a very good question. and I'm not sure I can give a totally satisfactory answer. Uh, the original mission to uh, degrade and destroy al-Qaeda was a perfectly legitimate one in the circumstances of 2001. Of course, where it's become difficult to describe the mission is as it became and evolved into a state, nation-state building mission, which of course uh, the international community supported, but frankly was rather, largely a utopian idea of what Afghanistan could become. It was never going to become a Western liberal democracy, and therefore it was always probable that some form of Taliban control would return. So what do you, I mean, what do you make of, of the withdrawal and what do you make there of Dominic Raab's comments that the UK was caught out by the speed of the fall of Kabul um, with some of the best intelligence in the world expecting it to hold until the end of the year? Well, he's definitely right. It was uh, unexpected. But of course, you used the word withdrawal and it was not a withdrawal. That would have been perfectly acceptable uh, because the strategic decision had been made to withdraw. But it was an evacuation. And evacuations are, by definition, hasty, improvised, and you take what you can gather and you leave. And that is what we've done. And where we should have had the time to conduct a proper orderly withdrawal, circumstances, principally the Taliban uh, advance on Kabul, meant that it became a rather hasty, improvised mission uh, with a fantastic tactical success in terms of delivering what the troops on the ground could do, but, of course, they were hopelessly overwhelmed by the inability to, to achieve a mission. And, yes, there will be people left behind, equipment, uh, and reputations have been left behind as well in that country. I mean, the UK says it has no idea how many people are left behind. Does that worry you? I, well, I think worry is, is the wrong word. It's, it was an evacuation, uh, and evacuations will leave items, assets, and people, unfortunately, behind. Of course, now what they will be trying to do is to pick up the pieces of finding out who was eligible and who should have been on some of those flights, who could have been on some of those flights, and why they were unable to access the airport and transport out of there. Uh, it's a sad situation from that respect, but that is the nature of a hastily and improvised evacuation, which should never have been the case. It should always have been an orderly withdrawal. Uh, if we had understood the true nature of the operational environment there. I mean, you say if we'd understand, understood the true nature of the environment. As defence analyst, what do you think we have learnt from Afghanistan? Well, it's a lesson that we've learnt before, and that is that mission creep uh, is, is, is not to be undertaken lightly. Uh, and I think a lot of people's ambitions for turning a country with the history of Afghanistan into a modern Western democracy was rather ambitious. Uh, from a military point of view, the original mission to degrade and neutralize al-Qaeda, who were being given support in that country, was a perfectly legitimate military objective. Uh, we should have stayed in that mode, to be honest. But inevitably, perhaps, much of democracy, the many democracies in the West wanted to try and see how we could change uh, a nation with a number of cultural and societal ideas that we don't agree with into something that we can recognize and work with. And perhaps that is where we have fallen foul of our ambitions. James McLaren, defense journalist and a former officer serving in Afghanistan, thanks so much for coming on the program. Appreciate your thoughts.